Okay, here we are at Clark Auction. First day of spring, getting ready for a nor'easter tomorrow. So we're going to show you some of the wrought iron we have on our sale coming up this Sunday, March the 25th, starting at 11 a.m. Okay, we have this wonderful, absolutely, extremely heavy wrought iron set. It's called the Four Seasons. You'll see it's spring, summer, autumn. We have the table. We have the little love seat. Alongside that, we have this bronze. Not too much patina on it, but nice quality and very heavy bronze fountain with a little putty in there holding the water. And over here, absolutely wonderful. Not overly old, but probably 30 or 40 years old, but the best of quality. Look at the work on these bronze urns and look at the size of them. I'm six foot two. Absolutely wonderful quality. Came from a rye estate. These, I believe, are estimated three to 5,000. And from the same estate over here, once again, not all the best a lot of age, maybe 30 or 40 years, but really great, great quality. Look at the face on this angel. Wouldn't you like to have that angel at home? Look, nice big pedestal urns, nice big size. And below here, a putty or two putty urn. All from the same estate. I believe these are four to 6,000 estimate. So just the right time of the year for this type of stuff. Okay, now we'll move in the main room before it snows down on top of us. Okay, we have a cacophony of stuff in here this time. We are loaded. Okay. We have a lot of nice French furniture of note. This is from a great next state. Curved glass, absolutely beautiful bronze work on this uh, vitrine. Nearly of the quality of Linky. We have lots of pedestals, two sort of alabaster ones there. Here in the middle for our used furniture buyers, we have this actually beautiful quality. It's Baker, Louis Philippe style. Nice leather top desk, partner's desk with the flip outs on each side. The top that one of the nicest piece of marble I've seen in a long time. This is by an Italian artist called Vichy. Absolutely wonderful of a gypsy lady, good looking girl. Over here, sticking to this sort of 19th century decorative continental stuff, we have a wonderful clock here. This is by a French clock. Nice big size bronze figural. This is by Charpentier. Absolutely wonderful condition. Below it, a nice alabaster pedestal with the bronze trim. Once again, for the used furniture makers, this is Baker. Great looking chinoiserie decorated, lacquered commode. Also from Great Neck, this pedestal here, nice rouge marble with the bronze mounting. Atop this, this is a bronze by an artist called Rancoule. Beautiful quality bronze with a nice rouge marble and the bronze trim on the base. Lots of used furniture. Someone's going to jump on these. Nice pair of down filled love seats. Before we go in the main room and confuse you, we have. This absolutely wonderful tambour front, 19th century, also linky quality satin wood, marble top, wonderful bronze work, little tambour cabinet. Here we have a Chinese three panel screen, vintage screen, not overly old, but once again, really nice with the sort of, I would call it a shadow box inserts. And now into the main room. As you can see, we are loaded. We don't even have stuff to store for the next side. We don't have space. We're going to start here with some of the mid century. This is a wonderful mid century bar. Different, probably Danish, came out of a Bronx estate. I believe it's three to 500 estimate. I topped that a nice pair of, usually see cabinets, but nice bull boxes. Typical, have them on the wrong side. Slightly as is with the loose, but that's par for the course. Moving along on the smalls. Wonderful little uh, bronze Buddha. Still got some of the gilding remnants on it. We have some nice, Dolls in this sale. This is of a lot of dolls, a lot of five, but this is the nice one. French, very much possibly Jumeau, but we couldn't take the wig off. She started screaming when we tried to lift it off her head. We have lots of Asian items up here. We have coral, we have angel skin coral. Below here, we have a lot of lead, we have three or four leaded table lamps, but this is nice. This is signed Handel, reverse painted. Look at the flowers on the mountainside. Moving right along, this is a Liverpool jug, it's what they call the Valentine jug. This is the everlasting knot. We have some uh, Royal Copenhagen. Here from the Bronxville estate, where the dolls came from, they had a lot of nice collectibles. It's a very nice lot of shaker. Nice with the original paint on that one. Shaker chair, little work basket, another box. That's one lot. Below here, more dolls. We have clocks. Now, furniture-wise, we have, this is a nice, sort of contemporary set, but nice to have. It's Hendredon. This came from a Bronxville estate. 
over here from Stamford. Once again, all this, the French stuff and the continental stuff in Stamford is wonderful quality. Look at the bronze work on this. Really nicely done. Over here, we have an Asian lamp with all these Buddha heads on it. Just a great looking lamp with the beading on, the, on it. Nice patina. We have a, the, for the mid-century buffs, we have a nice set of seven or eight of these. Nice original Bertoia chairs. They have an old weld on them here, but it's very strong. Baker's table, we have a Dunbar. Nice Dunbar, this is called a basket weave table. In the mid-century, over here, we have a nice Art Deco set. This is an Edmund Spence chest of drawers back in. We have a wonderful Art Deco bedroom set. Looks like it's complete by, I believe it's by Red Hill. Below this, we have a nice pair of these. These are vintage, newer, but beautiful leather top pair of Knoll style benches, a nice mid-century desk. We have some good mission furniture in the sale. I believe this is uh, Stickley Brothers. It's a settle with a slatted back. We also have a Stickley Audi settle. This is a rather large French style bureau plat. A little bit as is, but nice quality, newer. Once again, newer. On top of this, look at this large Meiji bronze, very heavy, but big size, probably Japanese urn. It's got a sign, a signature on the base. You can see it at clarkny.com. We have some nice 18th century French furniture from Stamford in the cell. Also came with the nice bronze mounted stuff. We have this little bergere. We have this wonderful uh, bibliotheque. We have nice pairs of love seats. We have console tables. We have this wonderful little Chinese vitrine here. As is up here in the glass, but nice with the different color burls and the lacquered wood, dark wood, and little pair of jade handles, another 19th century uh, French cabinet. We have mahogany sideboards. We have custom quality corner cabinets up on top here before we go past them. Some nice decorative items with beaded sconces. This looks like a crown of a bed, probably Italian silver gilt. We have Hendred on dining table. Nice table, has a leaf that sits on top of it. And nice set of velvet chairs here, go with it. Over here, a wonderful 19th century marble top, Louis XV style commode at the inlay. This was also from Great Neck. Moving right along, I used to like these. This is a wonderful English etagere, burl walnut. Nice with the Canterbury on the bottom and the inlay on the top, but nice big size. Very useful, you can pick the books up. Over here, this came from Stamford. It took an army of us to get this thing out of there. Very thick Lucide base. I believe it's by a guy called Richard Sturkin. He's from New Rochelle, but look at the gilt metal base and the thickness of that Lucide with the nice black glass top. It's a wonderful table. Came with these six mid, or 10 mid-century chairs, or 12 maybe. Also on top of that, we have a very large crackled glass shade. Also from Stamford, where that all that mid-century where the Bertoia chairs was. Okay, we have two Porter's chairs here. We have a wonderful Hendred on China cabinet. A great looking, great patina, plenty of viewing space. We have pairs of French commodes. We have this nice early carousel horse. Look at this, just as you like to find it. Missing a tail. Probably some kid was enjoying this horse so much and over the years. So this is exactly nice with the crackle paint. It's got a bit of sturdying on the bottom where they built it up. But a beautiful piece of uh, folk art there. Another piece of folk art in the cell. I must watch out for it's over there. Okay, we have more. We have this nice rosewood French commode here. Continental commode, we call it. We have Adam style sideboards. We have more beaded sconces. Before we go in that back room, which is a total disaster, we're only going in for two minutes. From Bronxville, we have this nice American mahogany bow front commode, raised on a bracket feast, nice solid commode. We have washstands, we have secretaire abattants. We're gonna just dive in here quickly. We have three Steinways in the sale. Last week we had two Steinways, this month we have three. But this one I've noticed in a I would say an empire style case. This is an art case, all the bronze mounting. 
was in an old house in Yonkers, so you can imagine with the bronze all back and cleaned up, this would be a wonderful looking piano. We believe it is an original art case one at Steinway. Once again, ClarkNY.com, and you can view the uh, serial numbers. This room, I'm not even gonna get into there in case I get lost in so much stuff. Oh, here, also from Stanford, we've got a lot of good items from Stanford. Look at this marble fireplace, as you love to find them. Wonderful bronze work, fluted arrow form pedestals. Really great, looked great in the house and will look great in your house. And atop this, another piece of folk art, nice early, early piece of folk art, American. I'm trying to think where the guy told me it came from. It'll dawn on me, but it's out of my head at the moment. Here we have another Steinway piano. Baby Grand, this came from a Garden City, Long Island estate. Here we have a Horner, nice Horner carved desk. And here, before we get to the finish line, I'm gonna show you one last Steinway. Nice upright Steinway in the Louis XV style. Sounds beautiful, beautiful patina, comes at a bench. We have a Ralph Lauren desk. We have lots of Canton porcelain. We have a big collection of milk glass porcelain. So go to www.clarkeny.com to view it. Before we leave, let's just catch the center section. I sort of walked away without it for the mid-century. We have this wonderful and extremely comfortable the said sofa. One, two, three, four pieces with the ottoman. I believe there's a spare piece. Nice carpets on the floor, you'll notice. Then we have this pair. This, these came from Central Park West, a pair of Milo Bauman chrome chairs with nice original Larson fabric on them. Just to match them, we have another pair of Milo Barman chairs, different type of fabric, but just as nice in its age. We have this Barbara Barry sideboard. And atop this, for any of you stuck in over the weekend, we have this nice, I would call a salesman sample billiard table with the balls. Look at the quality of the sticks. With that, I'm going to say goodbye and hopefully see you here Sunday. We start at 11 a.m. previews Friday and Saturday from noon to six. We'll see you then. Thank you. Welcome to our March 25th Fine Art Preview. I'd like to start here with a small watercolor by Arthur Dove. This is actually out of the same Larchmont estate as the Wilhelmina Barnes Graham that sold in our last sale for just shy of $70,000. Dove was credited being the first American artist to create pure abstract painting. So here we have a work that's actually uh, from later on in his career, circa 1940s, but it's what we think is an abstracted landscape. He was living and working in Long Island at the time. And here he's using just expressive line and color to create his composition. This painting is estimated at 15 to 25,000. Down below, I'll quickly show you, this is an Orientalist painting out of a Stamford estate. This is by Eugene Giardet, and he's known for his North African landscapes. Here we have a sort of small sketch or study of a figures at rest with a camel down in the lower left. Wonderful light and shadows here and a small work estimated at 800 to 1200. Now I'd like to show you a, a neo-expressionist painting. This is by Hunt Slonum. He's a New York artist known for his exotic birds often repeated throughout the canvas. But here we have a peacock whose feathers take up the entirety of the composition, but we still have that repetition that you typically see, this time in the peacock feathers. Really heavy, high impasto here nice deep greens and blues. This was painted in 2015 and is estimated at four to 6,000. Now let's take it across here and I'll show you this is a, another contemporary work. This is by Charles Hinman. This was done in 1985. It's called Delphi II and he's known for his shaped canvases and very minimalist form. Here we have the wonderful angles in high relief with simple planes of color but we have these angles that give us wonderful shadows too in different light. A really wonderful three-dimensional work. This is estimated at six to 9,000. Now I'd like to show you a smaller piece here. This is by Lolo Soldevia. She's a 20th century artist and part of the concrete Cuban art movement. The concrete artists were creating pure minimalist uh, abstraction. 
So there's no representation here, there's no abstracted form, it really is just a concentration on shape and color and space. Very much in, influenced by Kandinsky, another uh, uh, such artist. This was painted in 1959 and was purchased in Cuba and is accompanied by a certificate of authenticity here. The work is estimated at seven to 10,000. Now we have several pieces in this sale by African American artists. The first one I'm gonna show you, if we take a look at here, is by Lois Milu Jones. Not just a black artist in America, but a female artist. So she was painting in the 20th century, um, and in the 1930s, she traveled to Paris after she was told she wouldn't make it in the U.S. because of the color of her skin. So in Europe, she was able to really express herself, concentrate on her painting, not be inhibited. So she worked on scene painting, landscape, and interior paintings, though she is primarily known for her, her Haitian and African paintings. So this still life of lilies is being offered at a $1,500 to $2,500 estimate. And there's just another work by an African-American artist I'll show you before we enter the next room. This is by Corey Newkirk, and he's a contemporary black artist. This is actually a portrait, a line drawing done in bleach on paper. So a unique medium, but you can see really intentional fine lines to form the face here. So an unusual and fantastic work by Newkirk, estimated at 1,000 to 1,500. Next, I'd like to show you an expressionist work by the French artist Jean Paul. We have a Paris street scene. It's a depiction of Moulin Rouge with the Mistango banner across the front. And you can see the expressionist forms. We have a horse and carriage, a woman sitting in the horse and carriage uh, right across the front of the composition. Wonderful colors. We have energetic lines throughout it. Signed down in the lower right corner and estimated at 25 to 3,500. Up above, I want to show you one of three silk screens by another African-American artist, Jacob Lawrence. And you can see the large uh, planes of color that we usually have. This is the birth of Toussaint. It's signed down in the lower right, titled center and edition, lower left. There are two others, but please take a look at the website to see those. And I'll show you another one last uh, feature. This is by Daniel LaRue Johnson, an African-American painting. So we have sold several of his canvases. This here, another nice, very large work. Some of his pieces are very hard line, hard edge, but here we have soft, fluid colors across the canvas. We have bright oranges and purples and greens, and then a more muted uh, palette throughout the center. This is signed and dated on the back. It's called 5 BC. It was painted in 1973 and is estimated at 1,000 to 1,500. Out of another local estate comes this 18th century carnival scene. It's an oil on wood panel, and you can see the wonderful and fun uh, characters that we have scattered throughout the painting. We have a figure on stilts. You have the man down, bent down in the foreground with a feather. These masked figures here with these hollow eyes. Women looking on from above. So a nice large painting with an interesting provenance. We think it was brought over to the U.S. from Strasbourg in the early part of the 19th century. It was owned by the mayor of New York in about the 1830s. Then in uh, 1950, it went to Yale for restoration. It was identified as a Flemish painting, but we'll leave it to our old master experts. This is estimated at two to 3,000. Here we have a 19th century oil on canvas by Johann Karmienke. He was a German-born artist that became court painter to the King of Denmark in the 1830s or so. Uh, while he was court painter, he traveled throughout Switzerland, Germany, and Italy to sketch and paint the landscapes. So here we have an Italian coastal landscape, nice bright blue water, mountain in the background, and a high realism. We have figures on the path. So a really charming, expansive view. This work is estimated at 1,000 to 1,500. We have 13 works by Haitian artists in this sale, including a large number by Wilson Bagode. So I'd like to show you here, this is one of my favorite by the artists. We have a rose garden with a mother and child clipping the roses. It's an oil on panel, also mid 20th century. And down below we have another Wilson Bagode, this one a christening scene, all of them depicting Haitian life. So please take a look online for the others by the artist. As we come across here, you'll see we have other works by Haitian painters. We have a voodoo 
figure as well as a voodoo wedding up above. It's a lot of really fun, bright pieces. So check out the catalog for those works as well. And I'd like to wrap up here. We have a work by Owen Cullen Yates, who later just went by Cullen Yates. He's an American landscape painter. He studied under William Merritt Chase. So you can see the impressionist uh, influence that he had in his landscapes. This is called Very Early Spring in Shawnee, Pennsylvania. The artist held a studio in Shawnee for many years. So a nice reminder that spring is on its way here on our first day of spring. But a lovely landscape, some crack allure, but very happy to have this painting and a pretty impressive frame around it as well. It was painted in 1911, comes out of a local estate and is estimated at two to 3,000. As usual, we hope you join us for our auction preview this weekend if you can make it to the gallery and take a look at our full online catalog at clarkny.com. Thanks for watching. Hi, and today we'll be starting outside for our March 25th preview with this folding Asian screen. A really beautiful screen, a lot of inlay throughout. We have some cloisonne Asian characters here. Really nice scenes at the bottom. If you just want to take a quick look down here of, of men with foo dogs kind of training them. There are a lot of missing bits as you can see over here in this tree. A lot of pieces taped on, but we have numerous boxes of the inlay that's come out. So a lot of this, the pieces that are missing, they are present. Um, a really nice piece in this coming auction and we're going to move on to the jewelry and silver. All right, starting with our silver, we have this really nice grouping of Russian silver, mid to late 20th century, beautiful enamel work, more contemporary design, green, yellow, and white floral design. Um, everything is marked on the back, all by the same artist. Unidentified artist, but it is Russian. All of this estimated at 300 to 500. And here we have a sterling silver, Indian style decorative box, beautiful open work design, um, portrait plaques here of a male and a female. It is signed sterling silver. Just open it up, nice interior, good condition, no dings or dents or anything. Also estimated at 300 to 500. This is a five piece Strasbourg tea service, teapot, coffee pot, sugar, creamer, and waste vessel. Uh, really nice condition, no dents or dings. And I'm actually going to skip over this flatware service because this is the matching Strasbourg flatware service. So you could have the whole grouping together of the tea service and flatware set that we offer on March 25th. And another flatware set from the same estate is this Reed and Barton Diadem flatware set. Really nice design, clean lines with just this little detailing right here. I really think it's quite nice. A beautiful service estimated at 600 to 900. Miscellaneous decorative grouping. I love this. Really beautiful little pitcher with the dolphin form handle. It's actually American, although at first glance I thought it was continental. Um, nice etched glass. The claw foot sugar tongs. We have some stiff fruit spoons. This is the Versailles pattern. Beautiful handle here, a little cream ladle. And then an 800 silver sugar tongs with the nice rose design. Out of a Manhattan estate, we have this Norman Rockwell silver ingot set of fondest memories, really in the nice framed case, and it does fold over so it is enclosed or you can display it in the frame. Out of a local Larchmont estate, really a, a eclectic grouping of things that I like. Rose quartz, some daguerreotypes, this is an 800 silver bell. We have a lot of Asian silver items, enamel decorated. Two little enameled on copper bowls, they are signed. Sterling silver, kind of a funny duck teapot, but I like it. Um, so a little bit of miscellaneous silver in here. So we have some Scottish silver, retro, a sweet little guilloche enamel pendant in this top hat. So really an eclectic grouping at three to 500. I have a large amount of state. Silk scarves. Uh, we do have some Hermes scarves, Chanel, Tiffany. This one's really nice. So a be beautiful colors, beautiful condition, practically new in the boxes with the outer box. All together, these are estimated at 400 to 600. Gem specimens, two separate lots. We have a Brazilian amethyst 
crystal specimen has a little plaque here estimated at three to five hundred and then we have this quartz specimen possibly fade in crystal which is characterized by thread-like or needles in the interior of these crystals uh, i'm not a hundred percent sure that that it's that type but it's estimated at 300 to 500 and here to sell and starting on the jewelry, we have a lot of jewelry in this sale, a lot of really nice stuff. I'm going to start with this really wonderful Navajo silver necklace, coral inlay, and it is signed by Navajo artist Tim K. Whitman. So it is fully marked on the back on this, this large Naja pendant right here. Beautiful parachute or blossom form pendants here with the coral inlay shadow box design, estimated at 400 to 600 from a Connecticut estate. Concord 18 karat yellow gold ladies watch with the diamond surround. But do take a look here that the border is all diamonds. So across the entire bracelet are diamond accents to the border. This is estimated at 25 to 3,500. Men's watch grouping out of a Manhattan estate. We have this really wonderful Seiko watch or Seiko, um, red and blue bezel. It does um, similar to the Rolex, the Pepsi dial gold or yellow face, nice condition. This is a Japanese watch. It's Rico R-I-C-O-H, and this is a Geneve chronograph watch, all together at 300 to 500. 14 karat gold modernist earrings or ear clips with the central oval cut faceted orange gem, estimated at 400 to 600. 14 karat diamond and onyx heart form earrings, beautiful design, 400 to 600, really quality, craftsmanship. So the diamonds are really nicely inlaid into these earrings. Nice clips on the back, great quality out of a Long Island estate. Three antique rings, all diamonds, old cut, rose cut, and old mine cut. Rubies, and I do believe that this is a, a peridot, although it could possibly be a demon toyed garnet, but as far as I'm concerned, it's peridot. Um, a more contemporary piece in the sale is 18 karat yellow gold with um, pink and green spinel and diamond accents. Really beautiful, it moves beautifully, beautiful craftsmanship. It is stamped on the back with this nice diamond accent here and diamonds throughout. Estimate at two to 3,000. Ring lots, so all separate. So we have these two 18 karat yellow gold with citrine and peridot a 14 karat yellow gold diamond eternity band. This is really wonderful. So 18 karat white gold with the diamonds with a crossover or bypass ring, diamond engagement ring, platinum and diamonds, quite nice, five to 700. One of these retro or vintage rose gold, ruby and diamond rings estimated at three to 500. And then from the same estate as our heart form earrings, we have this 14 karat yellow gold enamel diamonds and central blue topaz ring estimated at 400 to 600. Out of a Scarsdale estate, we have these three crosses. This is a Scott K. Sterling cross with the original box, the original little jewelry case here, and there's actually a receipt inside um, with this 18 karat yellow gold cross with garnets and a Sterling cross with garnets, all together at 400 to 600. 18 karat Italian gold um, in the style of Cartier, the Pantheri link so this is quite nice out of a manhattan estate these are two separate lots but very similar stylistically in the same time period um, both 14 karat gold with a silver top diamond accents both have the option of being a pendant or a brooch so this one has beautiful movement here in the piece um, 18 karat ever popular at the moment is amethyst we have 18 karat gold with the open, it, open work foliate design and central cushion cut amethyst, four to 600. From the same estate are these two pieces, only separate lots, both 14 karat yellow gold statement bracelets, um, each one estimated at four to 600, the other five to 700. Love this bamboo design, beautiful texture to the gold finish. A nice 18 karat yellow gold choker necklace out of Manhattan. And we have some diamonds for you. Small diamond pendant, approximately 70 points, estimated at four to 600. And then we have these pearl and diamond earrings. Really quite nice, again, 400 to 600 conservatively. 
unique eclectic grouping of antique and vintage jewelry. We have a, isn't this the nicest stick pin you've ever seen? A little question mark, so sweet. And this is a, an old mine cut diamond and a, it's actually glass. So it very much resembles a sapphire, but it is glass. We have some emeralds, graduated pearl locket, nine karat gold, so this is English a little Victorian locket. And this is a beautifully hand-painted portrait. It is signed Hill, all together at 500 to 700. French ball form 18 karat gold jewelry grouping of the earrings and necklace. I do believe that they are from different makers, but both French and both 18 karat yellow gold, estimated at 500 to 700. More gold jewelry grouping, these two bracelets together. Um, this one does come with the additional links were really quite nice. Nice movement to these pieces, great quality. Baume and Mercier, eight, 14 karat gold ladies watch, four to 600. Another 14 karat gold bracelet, again, beautiful movement to this piece, beautiful craftsmanship out of Manhattan. 18 karat gold modernist brooch, beautiful, fully marked on the back. I believe the maker is Blitz. Um, here we have an open work 14 karat gold and garnet bracelet. Four to 600 out of Manhattan. Ruby and Florentine finish 14 karat gold bracelet. Wonderful, wonderful Victorian slide necklace. 14 karat gold with seed pearls and enamel, but you can see how it moves here. Really quite nice. This is estimated eight to 1200. Love the tassel to the bottom. This is a 14 karat gold necklace, great for layering. Has a little plaque here of white gold with three diamond accents. I love this necklace. Sapphire grouping of rings, retro or vintage with the central sapphire flanked by the diamonds. I think that this may be a later marriage of pieces, but it's really quite beautiful. And here we have a little French 18 karat gold with a sapphire cabochon. Moving on to some of our colored gem bracelets. These two are both 14 karat yellow gold with rubies, sapphires, emeralds, and diamonds. I think that they look great together. I'm actually gonna put them up to my wrist so you can see how I really think that they look wonderful. The, the consigner told me that these were her mother's and that she wore them together. And I think that it looks great. Um, beautiful set of three bracelets here. Heavy diamond weight, Ruby, Sapphire, and Emerald Cabochons. These are estimated at four to 6,000, all three together, set in 18 karat yellow gold. Pearl grouping, 14 karat gold ring, 14 karat gold mabe pearl and diamond earrings, and a wonderful pearl eternity band. Really quite nice. Angela Cummings Modernist Sterling Earrings, estimated at two to 300. Elsa Peretti for Tiffany, cuff bracelet, Sterling, Really nice. Moving on to this antique piece. So this is a copper and yellow glass with enamel decorated wedding wager cup. So German tradition, the, the groom would drink out of the larger cup and the wife-to-be would drink out of this cup. Really interesting, late 19th, early 20th century, estimated at 300 to 500. Beautiful contemporary pendant. I believe that this is a tourmaline with diamond accents. And I think that this is moss sitsit, which is similar to jade, but it's a composite of different gems. Altogether, this is estimated at 600 to 900 set in 14 karat yellow gold. It is signed, but I was unable to identify the maker. An interesting piece out of Manhattan. Tiffany grouping that came in on our walk in Wednesday appraisal day. We have a nice Tiffany charm bracelet, a bookmark, a keychain, a pair of cufflinks, and these wonderful, wonderful Tiffany & Company Favreau glass scarab earrings. All together estimated at 500 to 700. Yellow gold and diamond crescent moon form floral brooch out of Manhattan, 500 to 700. Another colored gem bracelet. So we have diamonds, ruby, sapphire, and emerald cabochons set in 18 karat yellow gold from the same state as our other colored gem groupings. Grouping of the Mason jewelry, antique Mason's ring, and this is a former president pin with a little diamond accent and enamel decoration. Both pieces together estimated at two to 300. 
18 karat gold choker. This is signed. And the thing that I wanted you to see on the back is it has this wonderful little bail for a pendant. So it either flips up and clips, or you can pull it down and have a pendant. A nice feature on this choker. Topaz and diamonds set in 18 karat gold. These are great. 14 karat yellow gold earrings set with baguettes and, and round diamonds, estimated at eight to 1200. Beautiful pair of earrings, the best quality. Moving on to this grouping of silver items. Miscellaneous lot, this is Russian silver, so a little decorative box. We have Hobie, this is a Hobie brooch, some sterling, this is Gorham, nice antique Gorham. Uh, coral beads, American silver, Taxco silver, et cetera, et cetera, all estimated at 300 to 500. 14 karat gold necklace with the diamond, pave diamond accents to these pendants, estimated at 1,000 to 1,500. Italian 14 karat gold necklace. We have a Victorian enamel decorated pansy brooch with the old European cut diamond in the center. Watch grouping, Elgin 14 karat white gold with the 14 karat white gold watch bob and a Waltham 14 karat gold plated watch. Another Bowman Mercier 14 karat gold ladies watch, five to 700. Beautiful 14 karat gold and sapphire ring, approximately one and a half carats to that center stone. Continental silver, diamond and emerald open work bracelet, really beautiful at 600 to 900. All individual amethyst lots, 14 karat amethyst bypass bracelet, Amethyst cabochon with the pearl surround. One pearl is missing, estimated at 400 to 600. Amethyst oval faceted ring and a pair of heart form amethyst earrings with the seed pearl drops. Moving on to a piece of Victorian. So we have this 14 karat gold and coral carved floral necklace, estimated at 400 to 600. Two leaves are missing, but they're present and it is in relatively good condition for its age. No cracks or breaks to many, any of these pieces. More coral, this is a grouping of angel skin coral. So we have the double strand necklace, 14 karat gold and floral carved brooch, floral earrings and the bracelet all together at 1,000 to 1,500. Salmon colored coral grouping. So we have this multi-strand necklace, the three strand graduated bead bracelet and the coral chip bracelet, Victorian signed on the back, Mary Coburn, all together at 600 to 900. Beautiful Art Deco Platinum Diamond and Pearl bracelet with the emerald accents. Beautiful, beautiful piece. Beautifully articulated, estimated at three to 4,000 with a large pearl. Artist made high carat koi fish pendant. The best craftsmanship. You can see all the millibeading and the filigree design to this. Sapphire eyes with the pearl in its mouth. Um, the consigner, she couldn't remember the name. It was a, a family friend who made this for her mother, and she believes her name was Magritte. 18 karat gold ruby and diamond foliate form brooch. Signed on the back, unidentified maker. 18 karat gold scarecrow brooch. I couldn't think this is any cuter. With the diamond eyes, the enamel decoration, the little legs move, really sweet. And then last but not least, I'm going to go through some of these pens. So this is a Chilton Clown pen with a nice gold nib, estimated at 400 to 600. Great colors to this piece. Um, German pen grouping, one is 18 karat yellow gold and the other is by the same maker, both together at 500 to 700. Large grouping of pens, all vintage pens. We've got a Gucci leather pen, we've got Waterman, Schaefer, Parker, there's two Montblanc Miser stuck pens, many with 14 karat gold nibs and with the Montblanc with an 18 karat gold nib. And that wraps it up. There are more items to be put up and more items on our website. We hope you take a look and we hope to see you on Sunday, March 25th. Thank you.